Let's be realistic. We all want to be a superhero. But for now, I gotta go back to my alter identity. In today's quick video, we're going to look at how to make a superhero mask out of craft foam. Quick and easy. Hope you enjoy it. Let's do it. Did I say that right? Let's go, let's go. I think I said let's do. I don't know what I said. But let's do it anyway. Let's go. In this video, we're going to make a Superman or a superhero disguise mask, kind of like the one in this picture. We're going to use that as inspiration, and we're going to make a quick template, and we're going to use some three millimeter foam, and we're going to try to make our own. Now, in order to do this, if you want an accurate fit to your specific face, you'd want to use something like a head form to make a pattern off of. This does not fit me exactly, but it's good enough, it's generic enough, to help you use and shape it once you heat it up and put it over so it'll fit a face a lot better than if it was just a flat piece and you were trying to uh, stick it on your face without any kind of shape to it. I don't recommend heating up foam and putting it directly on your skin because you could burn yourself. There's another head form that I have. I have made it bigger so it's actually more of the dimensions of my head but I have found that it works good for like helmets when you're only using the head part. But when you start getting down in the face, this face does not look anything like mine. Much more handsome than me. So uh, I don't like to use this when I'm using anything in this area or in the face. And since we're going to be doing a mask that covers pretty much the eyes, I'm going to skip on this guy as well. What I am going to use is Mr. Fathead. Mr. Fathead is a plaster cast of my face. I simply just use some... Uh, Plaster bandages covered my face. When that was done, I sloshed around a lot on the inside and then filled it with uh, plaster. It's pretty heavy, it's pretty clunky, but it works for what I'm trying to do. I also covered it with two layers of fiberglass resin, just the resin, no fiberglass backing, just to give it some stability so the uh, plaster doesn't chip off and I don't really cut into it and cut big pieces out when I'm working with it. So since this has all the real contours and dimensions of my face, that's what we're going to use. Now that we got Fathead all ready to go, we're going to go ahead and get started. I do want to warn you, the sound quality is not that great. I have my garage door open because I was using some barge rubber cement earlier and the fumes can gather and really uh, get to you. So I have that open, so you're going to hear cars traveling by. So please bear with me on that. I apologize for the extra noise. So what we're going to do... For the sake of simplicity, we're just going to take a plastic bag and we're going to use it to cover this. So when we make a template on top, we're not sticking directly to the face itself. This will be the underlying mesh, if you will. I just got some electrical tape. You can use masking tape or whatever you want. We'll try to get a good tight fit here. You could spritz this with some spray glue to really hold that down, but I'm out of spray glue, so I'm not going to be too concerned about it because we're going to press down into here anyway to get the shape we want. So now that we've got him suffocating, we're going to take some duct tape because what we're going to do is make a duct tape uh, pattern for this. I already got some pre-cut strips. I'll just go ahead and apply it in the area. I already know, this, this, this is just for your reference, not for mine but the eyes are here, it's going to be it's going to be about like this. That's about what we're going to try to cover. When you're using duct tape, you make sure you press it in good best to use smaller pieces when you have cracks and crevices and little uh, curves because big piece just won't get in those cracks and crevices quite as good. 
And you really want to press in there hard because this is going to try to hold the shape of your face. I just realized my last uh, memory card ran out of memory as I was recording. I don't know exactly where it left off. So we're going to touch over the basics in case some of it was missed and after I can review it. So what I did was I started out by making a duct tape template. Once I was done with that, I drew on here the shape I wanted over the face. and I could really look at it and get an idea of how it would fit on me. I then uh, went ahead and split it right down the center line of the face so I can know that when I make this template, both sides will be symmetrical. Symmetry is very important when you're working with something like this. You don't want one side to be up and the other side to be a little down or one side to be more round. It would look funny in the finished product. So we have gone ahead and cut this out with an X-Acto knife. I then put it on a piece of cardboard and traced it just so I have a good flat template. And since we're not too worried about this exact shape that we made out of the template, so it has this shape, we're going to do that with the foam. But I wanted to use a good shaped template just to make sure that when it was flat, I had all the material that I needed to bend it into this shape and still look the same. So now we have our cardboard template. We're going to trace this onto a piece of foam. Before we do, we have to always mark our templates. This is left side. Yes, it looks like the right if you're facing it, but if this is on you, this is your left. This side would be the right. So I'm going to write right on the opposite side. I was originally going to try to use 5 millimeter foam, but I'm thinking that might be too thick. So we're going to go with 3 millimeter craft foam here. This was a buck at the craft store. I believe it was Hobby Lobby. Since this is such a sturdy pattern already with being cut out of cardboard, I'm not going to pin it down. I am just going to hold it in place and trace left and right sides. And just because I know this edge right here of this template is going to be flat, I'm going to hold it right up to the flat edge. It's one less cut I have to make. Okay. Mark left. Let's make sure we get that a little better. Now, just to make sure we have symmetry, we're going to flip this over to the right side. Instead of doing it this way, I'm just going to turn it upside down so I can use this flat edge again. We're just going to start at an angle. Follow the curve. Sometimes people ask, do you cut on the outside of the line? Do you cut on the inside of the line? I try to cut right in the center of the line, but again, um, that millimeter of difference won't really make or break your cosplay piece. So just do what you need to do. Now I should have two identical pieces, left and right. They're a little off if you kind of look at the edge, but that's what you can use one of these sticks for. If you hold it together really good, you could go through and sand it down, or you could even hold it down and get those little extra edges where it doesn't line up perfectly. Or you could just leave it as it is. So here's what our final piece will look like when it's together. Of course there will be some shape and everything. But we're going to go ahead and cut out the eyeballs and move on from there. Since that's such a tight fit, I'm going to go ahead and use an X-Acto knife to get the eyes out. Now that everything's all cut out and ready to go, you can go over all the edges with the sanding stick to really get down in there. Down in those fine cracks and crevices, you can use a sanding stick on a popsicle stick to really get in there. But just for the sake of time, I'm going to use my Dremel tool. And what I have is a Chicago electric Dremel with the extension bit so I can really work with it. It just hangs here in my garage and it's ready for me to use whenever I need. I picked this up at Harbor Freight maybe 25 bucks. So I'm just going to use this to straighten out all the edges as I hold it together just because I want to make sure everything is uniform. 
I'm going to turn this bad boy on. Hold this nice and tight. And it's going to go over the edges. I failed to mention to put on a dust mask when working with sanding foam. When you're using a sanding tool, it's not as bad like this, a sanding stick. It's not as bad because it doesn't fly around. But when you're using a Dremel, that's going at a pretty high speed and it's kicking that dust and dirt up everywhere. So always use one and make sure you're in a good aerated place. So I'm going to go ahead and separate these. And I'm actually going to knock down the edges a little bit because I want this to have kind of a rounded effect to it. Using the table allows you to really get in that angle good and in pretty much one direction. Not the band. <laughs> and what that'll do is in the end you're going to have a nice curved beveled edge on this. That you didn't have to use a sanding thing like a uh, Dremel tool or you didn't have to cut it in an angle to get that nice beveled edge. You can see the difference in this edge. See there's a roundness to it versus this flat hard edge. So I'm going to continue around the piece and do that. I'm just going to go over it and knock those fuzzies off. And then we're going to move on to the next section. Okay, I've gone around all the edges using my sanding stick and a nice little angle like this. Gone around, cleaned them up pretty good. Went around the eye sockets with the sanding popsicle stick to really get in there and get those edges and try to give a little bit of shape to it as well. It's not 100% perfect at this point, um, but it's pretty good. Now what I've gone and done is I've added one layer of barge rubber cement to the places where they're going to meet. And I've went ahead and sped dry it using my heat gun. I would prefer, I would prefer that you would use a hair dryer, that way you don't burn your phone. But we're just going to use what we have in the shop at the moment. And again, again, when you're using barge rubber cement or any other kind of chemicals, make sure you have good airflow in your workspace. Again, I have my garage door open, hence all the sounds of the vehicles going by. So I'm going to speed dry these using gentle heat and just not holding it in place too long. Now we're going to set them on a flat surface so we know that we're going to have this even. And I'm going to just line up the tip and work it down to the bottom. And push in there really good. If you want to be as accurate as possible, you should give this a couple hours to dry. That way the barge sets up fully and when you heat this up again, you won't really reheat the barge as much. Barge cement does not like heat, but it particularly doesn't like it when it's still drying. Uh, you can really lose your adhesion if you heat this up immediately. So if I had a recommendation, I would say go ahead and let this sit and uh, cool down for a little bit. I'm sorry, dry off for a little bit and then come back for the next step. Now that this had time to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to heat seal the edges. And what we're doing is we're taking these areas where all the sanding has created these little fuzzies and really opened up the foam pores and we're going to seal them with heat. Sorry, more construction vehicles. And to do that, you can do two things. You can use your heat gun, which is fine, but I prefer to use a propane torch. So what I'm going to use is just a generic propane torch end on top of a camping propane uh, contain container canister is what I was trying to say. Uh, this is only a couple bucks versus the kind that has the trigger. The kind with the trigger is easier to light. However, this is a lot more cost effective. You just turn it on. And yeah, we'll light it. Boom. You don't need it to be too powerful or anything. So just accordingly, you can figure out which direction to turn it. Okay. So all we're going to do is we're going to lightly sweep the edges. If you hold this in place too long, you will melt the foam. Now 
Now if you were to compare a regular piece of unsealed foam to this, you'll see this has a lot shinier surface than this. It shows that that little, that light gloss is the foam uh, pores all nice and closed. Okay, the next step is taking this, warming it up, and heat forming it against our guy. We're going to heat form it so it fits pretty well to my face. I'm going to lay him down and make it a little easier. Get our heat gun out. Shoot that bug away. I'm going to go ahead and heat this up. We're going to hold it right on our dude. Make sure we get around the nose real well. Hold it in place. The bridge of the nose is probably going to be the most uh, integral part for this to fit right. So the bridge worked out pretty good. The sides, not so much. Well, we can just reheat the sides. Bend them by hand. Give them some bend. There you go. Much better. So now we have the basic shape. I'm going to test fit. That looks ridiculous from that angle. Hello. Hello, world. Oh, bad lighting. Bad lighting. There we go. I'm going to do a test fit. And I can see that the eyes aren't exactly where I'd like them to be. Widen that. And I'm going to cut that out and continue from there. After that adjustment, I like how that fits much better. To get that little extra piece off. I could add a scar down the front of it if I wanted. Do whatever I wanted at this point. But we're going to go ahead and prime it. We're going to take some Mod Podge and we're going to add three layers over top of this, allowing each layer to dry in between. And that's really all we're going to do. So you don't really need to watch the whole process, but we'll get started with it. You may lose some shape throughout this, that's okay. We're not that worried about it because it's pretty thin. We can make it fit on our faces with a little bit of adhesive such as liquid latex or spirit gum. Alright, the last step of this process now that everything is dry on here is to paint it. I got just a little piece of plastic from uh, something I bought and I just use it as a paint holder for this. And I got a paintbrush, just some good old fashioned acrylic paint. And we're going to give this two good coats of solid black. Nothing more. Don't need any kind of shading or highlighting for this. It's just going to be a dark black mask with black eyes underneath. So we're going to go ahead and get that going. Alright, that's pretty much dry, so we're going to go ahead and move on to our second layer of our black paint. And then we're going to uh, finish it off with some clear coat. I wanted to show you this clear coat. I picked this up today. And this is Treehouse Studio brand. I've never seen it before. I picked it up at Hobby Lobby for $5.99. It's matte. You can also get it in gloss, but I prefer matte. If I want it glossy, uh, I would get the gloss kind. But for this, I don't want it to be too shiny. Uh, and on the back it says use to coat wood, wicker, fabric, plastic. That's what we want. And I haven't seen too many clear coats in a rattle can like this for about six bucks. Um, the Krylon Fusion brand is a little more pricey. So I'm going to try this one out and see how it works out. I'm sure it'll do just fine. But uh, don't be afraid to look around for different kinds of things when you're out looking. Um, there's 
This brand of acrylic paint was 79 cents a container. They had other ones that were $1.30. They had them all the way up to $2.79. So I got much more uh, paint because I went with an off-brand. And it looks like it's covering just fine. So don't be afraid to look around, especially when you find something like this at $5.99. I picked up a couple cans today. So just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and paint this second layer, and then we'll move on to that clear coat. Okay, our second layer is dry, and we're going to move on. We're outside in a well-ventilated area. We've got our clear coat, which is matte, and we're just going to give this two quick layers. Nothing too fancy. There's layer one. Don't want to put it on too thick, just spritz it and allow it to dry before putting on your other layer. Don't forget to read the directions about dry time in between each layer. That's very important to uh, remember. And there you have it. Throw on a cape, take off your glasses so you don't look totally ridiculous, because that's your first part of your disguise and use something besides a little bit of electrical tape with your cape. But this just to kind of illustrate what it looks like. I just do it on with a little bit of liquid latex, a little closer for you. The lighting's not that great. Let's see if that helps. Threw on a little bit of liquid latex underneath and on my skin and just stuck it on there. It's not a lot of black paint. Should Could have went a lot darker and make it look a lot better. But that's just to give you an idea of what it could look like when you make that. So I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to download the template. And until next time, that didn't look like I flew at all, did it? Hey, wait, wait, wait. Before you go, you should think about stopping over and seeing me at cccosplay.com. There you can find articles and tips to help you take your cosplay to the next level. Also, if you sign up for the membership email list, I'll send you a few surprises and let you know about special things before anyone else has a chance to hear about them. It'll be our little secret. And remember, stay crafty.